this Sunday, May 15th at three o'clock at Lutheran Church of the Cross, the Mennonite Community Orchestra under the direction of Andrea Bell will be presenting a concert that they are calling Living on the Edge. The concert will feature music of Mozart and Rossini and will also feature violin soloist Will Harder in a performance of the first movement of Paganini's famously difficult first violin concerto. And joining me here over Zoom, I am joined by violinist Will Harder and host for the Mennonite Community Orchestra's concert, Liam Berry. Hi, Liam and Will. Good, good to see you and good to meet you here over Zoom. Yep, good to see you. Hey. Uh, Will, I'm going to start the conversation out with you. Um, can you introduce yourself to our Classic 107 audiences? Can you talk about where you're going to music school now and who you're studying with and how long you've been playing the violin, all that kind of thing? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I'm currently attending Canadian Mennonite University. I uh, just finished my first year there studying music uh, with a focus on performance. Um, I'm studying the violin with WSO concertmaster Gwen Hobig, and I've been studying with her since 2018, so a couple of years now for sure. Um, and yeah, I've been playing the violin since I was four or five, so a very long time. And um, kind of grew up on the Suzuki method and yeah. Huh. Amazing. Uh, Liam, uh, can you also introduce yourself? And I'm particularly interested in how you got the opportunity to host uh, the Mennonite Community Orchestra's concert. You're not an orchestral player, right? You don't play an orchestral instrument? No, I'm, I'm not. I'm a composer. I've always said that a pencil is my first instrument. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm also attending uh, Canadian Mennonite University. Uh, I just finished my second year and doing composition studies with Neil Weisensel. Um, and as I recall, I, I think uh, Anna Schwartz, one of the board members just kind of came up to me and said, hey, would you like to host this? And I just thought it sounded like a great deal of fun. Uh, so here I am. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, Will, how did the opportunity uh, come about to perform the first woman of Paganini's concerto? Um, yeah, I guess maybe similarly, I was approached by Bob Weeb, who sort of runs the Mennonite Community Orchestra. Um, I had played the concerto for my recital, um, my CMU recital in fall, and I, uh, I guess word got around <laughs> that I was playing it, and I'm a part of the orchestra, and so um, he just asked if I'd like to play it with the orchestra, and yeah, I thought it was a great opportunity, so of course I said yes. Mm -hmm. I I know this first violin concerto Paganini. It's actually one of the first recordings of his music that I bought. There's a great recording with Maxime Vengrov doing it. Mm -hmm. um, it is fiendishly difficult, although I guess you can say that with all of Paganini's violin music. Um, mm -hmm. Can you talk about some of the technical demands that Paganini requires of the violinists uh, to do? And in particular, there's this interesting thing that Paganini asks the violinists to do. It's this scordatura tuning. Can you talk about the ch technical challenges and what specifically scordatura tuning is? Yeah, sure. Um, well, with scordatura um, in specific, um, although that is the way that, like, so um, back when Paganini would play this concerto, um, he would tune, um, tune his violin up to be uh, like a half step higher. And so then the orchestra would play in E flat major and he would um, have sort of the open strings be able to ring over the orchestra. Um, nowadays, that's not um, really common practice anymore. So most people will just play it in D major as I am. But um, there are many other, like lots of technical challenges with Paganini. He, there was a lot of interesting techniques that he used like ricochet bowing and false harmonics and um, like tenths all over the place which are sort of the the farthest that the fingers can stretch so there's certainly a lot of um techniques that he'd make use of through his music mm -hmm. and i'm presuming lots of double stops as well right yes doubles a lot of double stops doubles and triples yeah yeah, yeah. 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 unbelievable and how long have you been working on the paganini concerto um it's funny it's actually been about a year now that i think that i had started it um although it's been a bit in, on and off um, for when I'm playing it and when I pick it back up. But yeah, it's been quite a while since I started it. And is it like uh, returning to an old friend when you do come uh, come back to it? 
Yeah, an old friend of sorts. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> friendly, sometimes not, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, Liam, uh, the concert is also going to feature uh, Mozart's Symphony Number no. 38, his Prague Symphony, as well as a performance of Rossini's Thieving Magpie Overture. Um, did you have to do like research for these pieces? And can you talk about what you're going to be doing as hosts for this concert? Are you going to be setting up the pieces? How is this going to work on Sunday? Yeah, I did a little bit of research and listening and reading ahead of time, of course. Um, they're wonderful pieces, so it's easy to do. Um, but basically my role on uh, Sunday is I'm going to be introducing the pieces um, and I'm going to be letting the musicians uh, do what they do best uh, and take over from me. So I'll be up, say some words, and then let them play. And for a host, uh, as the host for the concert, what are you looking forward to most uh, on Sunday? Do you have anything in mind? Well, um, I mean, I'm, I'm very excited for the Mozart. Uh, that first movement of the Prague Symphony is mm -hmm. just, it's a tour de force of compositional technique. It's really incredible the way Mozart synthesizes this light galant style with um, all these Baroque and almost sometimes almost Renaissance techniques of imitation and counterpoint. And the way he brings us together in this profoundly rhetorical way is I, I, it's just thrilling mm -hmm. um so uh, i'm very excited uh to see uh and hear that mm -hmm. um well whenever whenever i think of mozart 38 i always think of the wind writing speaking for myself as a wind player he wrote these very lavish uh wind parts uh he had the audience in mind he wrote it for bohemian audiences bohemians were at the time known for their great wind players as a string player What's your favorite thing about playing the Prague Symphony of Mozart? Yeah, um, I think the string writing is um, really quite playful, which is something that I always enjoy. Um, playing music like that, um, things can be very serious, which I like, but um, you know, sometimes I like the lighthearted nature of things. And so I find that quite fun. Mm -hmm. And you don't get any more lighthearted than uh, the Rossini overture that's that's on the program. Uh, the orchestra is going to be doing the uh, Thieving Magpie overture. Um, is it the same uh, for you, Will? Like uh, Whenever I think of Rossini's string writing, it always seems so playful and so much fun. Is it yeah. playful and fun to play or is it technically demanding, which it also sounds like? Um, yeah, I would definitely say that's um, a lot of fun to play. I mean, everything comes with its, its challenges, but um, I would definitely say that it's more fun than it is, that it, than it feels like a technical workout. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for you, uh, what, what are you looking forward to on the, on the concert of the, of the three pieces, the Paganini, the Mozart, or, or the Rossini? What are you looking forward to most playing? Is it the Paganini just because you get to show off, or is it going to be like the Mozart where you get to sort of not chill, but relax a bit? Um, I think I'm looking forward to the Paganini uh, most. Of course, uh, it's always a little nerve-wracking to get up there and, and play a concerto, but, um, you know, I love... Um, soloistic playing a lot and so that's kind of what excites me a lot of the time about music and so yeah I'm really looking forward to that I would say mm, great 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 Liam I'm going to wrap the conversation up this way uh the concert sounds like it's going to be just fantastic uh where can people get tickets uh for Sunday's concert yeah so we'll have tickets at the door <clears throat> um so you're always welcome to grab some and just come along and, and grab some tickets then um uh, or you can book some ahead of time uh, by contacting uh, our email at mco, oh, sorry, mcorchestrawpg at gmail.com, um, which is, you can find all that information on our website uh, at uh, mennonitecommunityorchestra.ca. Yes, and for our Classic 107 listeners, I will embed a direct link to the Mennonite Community Orchestra's website on our article. That'll be in the article at classic107.com. Will and Liam, the concert this Sunday at 3 p.m. at Lutheran Church of the Cross is going to be really, really excellent by the sounds of sound by the sounds of it. Thanks so much for taking the time to chat with me today. This has just been a lot of fun. Ah, thank Thanks, you. Kurt.